Hey, welcome to the uh, Airmere Roundtable. Uh, uh, today is the 14th of December, 2018. Uh, we have our guest, uh, Mark Anself, with the Night Owl Trading System. Uh, welcome, Mark. Nice to have you here. Um, thank you for inviting me. Oh, at any time. Uh, before we get going, uh, though, we do have a disclosure that Airmere is not a broker-dealer or an investment advisor. This is for educational purposes only. Options involve risks and are not suitable for all investors. Same with futures. Uh, past performance is not indicative of future results. And if you'd like to read the whole disclosure, go ahead and uh, pause the video or, uh, for the recording or go to the bottom of our website. So with that, let me just bring up the other slides that we had. Let me turn that off. And um, just to, Mark and I have known each other for what, a couple of years now. Uh, we were over at Capital Discussions before, but now that that's been dissolved, we moved everything over here to Aramir. And, uh, the night owl has been going pretty well, and I think the uh, the subscribers have been pretty happy with it generally. Just uh, it's um, it's not options; it's a little bit different. It's futures, but it's, it has really good results. So uh, maybe you want to say a little bit more about it, Mark. Um, I will. Um, it is different than options um, in a couple of ways. Of course, the financial instrument is different, but also um, unlike the options programs that may do. I don't know, a few trades per month, perhaps. Um, Night Owl is active. Uh, Night Owl has a recommendation uh, in either the crude oil or euro currency markets uh, every night. Some nights um, it has trade recommendations for both markets. So over the course of a month, uh, 20 trading days, um, Night Owl will typically post about um, 20 trade recommendations. And it's split roughly evenly between those two markets, not by design. It's just um, based on what the system uh, uh, finds in doing its analysis. Um, and then it will tell us whether it expects um, the market to go up or to go down. When I say the market, I'm referring to crude oil and euro currency, uh, those two markets. It, it will d decide whether it thinks those markets will go up or go down and recommend an, uh, a stop uh, price at which it will regard itself as wrong. So that's what the Night Owl system offers. It offers um, direction and it offers um, a stop price where it concludes that it was wrong in its analysis. With that information, I then make recommendations as to where subscribers should enter. Um, typically those recommendations are on either side of where the market closed the previous day because um, we don't want to miss a move. So um, uh, if it, preferably we get a, a retracement move and can enter on a limit order, uh, but sometimes um, a market will not retrace sufficiently um, for us to enter on the limit and then we end up uh, entering a little bit in front of where it last traded on the previous day. Night Owl does not chase markets. So that's a very quick synopsis of what Night Owl does. Oh, I, I should also mention that Night Owl recommends um, target prices and sometimes um, Sometimes traders ask me where they should seek their exit because night owl, for those of you who have never seen a night owl price array, and um, again, I don't have the ability to post slides, so I don't have one I can show you per se, but they are available on the Aramir site. Um, night owl makes its stop recommendation and it makes the entry price recommendations. And then it also lists targets alphabetically, alpha through, how far do we go? Golf, I believe, G, A through G, um, as to where one can seek an exit. Of course, the nearer the price, the higher the probability of Night Owl get, or of a market getting there. Night Owl regards itself as right, as correct, as successful, if we get to target C, target Charlie. Um, let me add that in the current pricing of Euro, target C is about 40 ticks from the entry. And with the current pricing of crude oil, target C is about 95 to $1.05 away. And I, I emphasize the current pricing because as prices go up, um, 
targets expand accordingly and likewise as prices go down they shrink accordingly such that if if crude oil for example were trading at about eighty dollars instead of fifty two or thereabouts um, target C would be more like a dollar fifteen or a dollar twenty away but in any case um, that's what night owl offers us it offers us the stop it offers us the expected direction it offers us recommended entry prices uh, and then you know again I I will include in my posts the various targets depending on how much risk versus reward someone is willing to take so again that's a very quick synopsis of uh, what Night Owl will offer you and what you would see if you were to become a Night Owl subscriber because we do post these um, recommendations every night. Well, I know you can't see the screen. I, I just pulled up the 9 December uh, Sunday uh, planning notes for the Euro so okay. they can see uh, an array and actually what you send out to everybody. Okay, uh, let me open up the Aramir site and go to that array so that if anybody wants to ask questions about it at least I will have something in front of me so I know what they're looking at right okay meanwhile you said you you had other questions you could ask and so ask away okay um, let's see well uh, I know you've been trading a long time I think uh, over 20 years and uh, so how did you develop the night owl I think it's uh, is it GAN based or square rule of nines or something uh, it's well a um, combination it's it's actually uh, a combination of many different things I've learned over the years, things that work. Because um, as you said, I've been doing this for a long time. I began trading in 1995, began trading futures contracts at the CME in 1997. So in 20 years of experience, I found a lot of things that don't work and relatively few things that do work. Um, one of the things that works amazingly well is the square of nine. And the original square of nine I learned from my, um, my mentor, who was a floor trader at the CME, uh, specifically in, the, in live meets, and at that time he also traded Deutsche Mark. Um, and he introduced me to this concept of the square of nine prices um, that the markets tend to tend to seek them out. And, and when they reverse, they tend to reverse on square of nine prices. Um, I knew nothing about the square of nine at the time. It's actually based on uh, ancient mathematics. Uh, the, the Egyptians supposedly used the square of nine to build the pyramids. Um, as they didn't have slide rules and logarithms in those days, but they had the square of nine. And so the numbers had some, have some amazingly interesting properties. And lo and behold, my mentor was right that um, not just Euro and crude oil, but any market trades and turns on these square of nine prices with amazing reliability. And so as traders, this is a very useful tool for us because it allows us to um, take the stop from Night Owl, for example, and say, okay, well, if, if Night Owl thinks that it will be wrong if crude oil goes up to $52.50, um, but it also thinks crude oil is going to drop, then um, where should I go short? And uh, by using a square of nine price, um, we have a very high likelihood of getting into that market uh, on a retracement with very little additional movement against us. Um, and so again, when I post the arrays in the nightly posts and you see all those prices, don't be intimidated by all those lines. It doesn't mean you have to take an entry on all those lines. Um, the, at, the little at symbol um, shows the, the uh, entry price that will support three contracts with about $1,200 of risk. Um, and the, just as an aside, the reason the $1,200 of risk is important is if you, if you end up trading for the bank um, that Night Owl will refer you to if you become a subscriber to the Night Owl Advisory Service, that bank allows you a $3,000 per day loss limit. And so if, Night Owl has a trade for both Euro and 
crude oil on the same day and each is risking uh, about twelve or thirteen hundred dollars that keeps you inside of their daily loss limit that's why the at sign is there um, uh, in any case the at the at symbol recommends an entry there are other prices between that at symbol and the stop price which will allow you the possibility of greater reward if the market retraces to that price but if it doesn't retrace to that price and, and goes in the night owl direction first then it will leave you standing on the platform you know wishing you had taken a little more risk so and I cannot make those decisions for my subscribers because I have no way of knowing um, what each person's reward and risk tolerances are so that's why we put multiple suggested entry prices out there but I think it's safe to say that most of the new subscribers have started with the at price because it gives them, you know, something to begin with. And then once they get a little experience with Night Owl, they can decide for themselves whether they want to take one of the better prices or one of the more aggressive prices. Okay. Um, now I've got the array up from the, from the Sunday, the ninth, if you want to talk about that some more, or do you want to go over the performance metrics? Um, well, prefer? Well, uh, I can tell you the performance metrics, I remember them from the slide roughly. Um, those are, uh, that was based on real money trading. Um, and as I recall, the, the accuracy percentage was about 73%. Um, since moving over to Aramir, um, the accuracy has been a little higher. Um, uh, and now I've, I've lost that information. I'll, let me get the calculator real quick because I remember what the number was. It was 78%. Uh, We've had 78% accuracy on the call since moving over to, to Aramir. Um, and again, those are not hypothetical. Those are not after the fact. Those are based on the calls that I make on the night before and then whether Night Owl was right or wrong on the next day. So it has been right 78% uh, of the time since we began posting at Aramir. So Mark, how do you determine if it's right? I mean, do you like to take the close price to the close no, no, price? No, 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 no. It's, it's the definition of delivery. Again, not the per, think about the purpose of Night Owl. Night Owl makes a prediction of whether a market will go up or go down in the next session. So the definition of whether it's wrong, of course, is if we hit the stop. If we hit the stop, well, we were wrong. If it was right, that means it got to target C target Charlie. So it's a very simple determination. Did we get to target Charlie or not? If we did, it's right. If we did not, it's wrong. Okay, simple enough. And again, at the current prices, target Charlie is about 40 ticks on the arrow and, and close to a dollar for crude oil. Um, Tom, you said you're on the, the ninth for euro or the ninth for crude oil? Uh, the euro, the 6E. Okay. Uh, oh, I guess I have to hit the refresh. That's right. That's probably why I can't find it. Okay, the ninth. Aha, uh -huh, I'm there. So, so last, it, last price was one thirteen eight ninety five. Um. Yes, I am there. And, okay. And good. Just to, to to adapt the lingo, it's thirteen eighty three half. Thirteen eighty three half. Okay. You know, we ignore the leading one because it's. Well, for almost the last 20 years, it's always been one. Uh, I'd love it to be below one, but... Uh. Yeah, me too. <laughs> you know, when the first, the first Euro trade I took, I remember, um, I, I longed it at 95 cents. And um, I've seen it go up into the upper dollar 40s. So, you know, but, by comparison, a dollar 13 is not all that bad. I made a mortgage payment once at 157. So oh, was, my gosh. Oh, my word. That was painful. I imagine that was very painful. But if, if you've got a slide that, that we can show to the listeners um, of the ninth, because again, I'm blind to what you're posting. Oh. So if you can yeah, show that to them. Yeah, we're, we're looking at it. The planning okay. note for Sunday the ninth. Okay. Um, first, let me say this to, to all of you who are here. Um, if you don't follow everything that I will tell you today, don't worry. We have another presentation scheduled uh, I think you said it was the 26th. Is that 26th. right? 26th. Yeah, it's the day okay. after Christmas, right? Okay. So um, between now and then, hopefully I will learn how to post slides on um, this site. So um, we have something a little easier to see. But 
even if not, there will be a second opportunity for you to hear how this works. But you can see on the post, it, I assume it's color, right, Tom? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can see on the post that um, in, in the case of the ninth, I put a little note out there telling the subscribers that if the opening price on that night, which I think was Sunday night, but in any case, the opening price on that night falls between the range of 1391 through 1393, then we would have to shift the at sign and the little tilde sign um, to different recommendations. So again, what the, the, what the point is I'm trying to make is that Night Owl is, is dynamic. Um, it, it makes these assessments in real time as opposed to something arbitrary like always risk 50 ticks and always target 30 ticks. You don't want to trade like that because markets are dynamic. They go up and down, the volatility expands and contracts, and you need to take those kinds of things into account. So if, if for example, you're in, a, in an environment where volatility is expanding, like it is now, um, in general, I mean, in not just in my two markets, uh, Euro and, and, and crude oil, but certainly in S&P as well, and other stock indices, uh, when you have that rising volatility, the smart way to trade is to allow yourself more risk per contract, seek a higher target per contract, and potentially trade fewer contracts so that your dollar amount of risk doesn't change. So what am I talking about? Well, again, if, if we have a situation like now where volatility has been great for the past three or four months, give or take, um, taking a risk of, let's say, um, 80 cents in crude oil makes a lot of sense as opposed to if volatility is small, like it was a year ago, where you might only want to risk 60 cents on a trade, but trade more contracts. Um, in other words, just allow your trades to breathe. And that's what Night Owl does. And that's why sometimes these recommended entry prices shift, um, as we see on the note. Okay, that issue aside, you can see on the array, there are several lines of prices. The, little, the, the capital S means that Night Owl wants to go short. And you can see uh, towards the top where it says we're seeking a short reversal. So apparently on the day before, um, the, the predominant move of Euro had gone up. Um, the, the at sign, that again is the recommended entry price. It's based on where the market last traded, which let's see, it, it last traded at 89 half and a little bit further to the right, we see or should see where it opened. Um, uh, 14. Uh, 1407, yeah, 1407. Okay, well, in that case, oh, I remember this. It's because it opened outside of the gap range, which is immediately to the left of the 1407. We were saying that if market opens under, uh, at or under 1383 half, or at or above 1393 half, then the entire setups below would cancel, which they did because it opened at 1407. And as I recall, I, um, and yeah, I, uh, if you have the ability to scroll up one set of um, one array, Tom, in, in the post, you'll see the updated setups that I posted about an hour later. Um, can you do that or not? Uh, and see, next planning note was, uh, I, it looks like it was on the, for, it says for Monday the 10th. Last uh -huh. price, 1362. No directional determination possible for the session. Okay, um, the, there was an intermediate post. Um, that I made at about a quarter to seven on Sunday night. Um, I'm looking at it now at the Aramir. Oh yeah, I see there's two of them, right? Yeah, I think exactly. I was looking at the second one first, so okay. sorry okay. about that. Gotcha, okay. So um, that was an updated post because the Euro on Sunday night opened outside of the gap range, which meant I had to do the analysis all over again. And in doing the analysis over, um, Night Owl determined that the more likely move 
for the following 24 hours would be up instead of down. And so it came, it, it, it provided us with a price array um, for the long side. Um, so I'm now looking at that, if that's what you've- Okay, now posted. I'm looking at the long one. Okay, and that's what you've posted to the group? Yes. Okay, so we're looking at an at sign that says, um, seek along at 1394. Um, right. Market never retraced down to that 1394. It never got there. It did go up. In fact, Monday was a very nice day for the euro if you could have gotten long without chasing the market. Like I said, Night Owl doesn't chase because chasing usually is not a good idea. Um, but Night Owl got that direction right. It just did not elect an entry in that case. So by our metrics, it was wrong. It's kind of an odd situation. Night Owl was right, but it was wrong. It was right because it got the direction right, but it was wrong because we did not get to target C because our entry never elected. That happens every once in a while. And um, the Monday session was one of those cases. Normally, to avoid something like that, um, let's, let's go back to the first post, Tom, and just pretend that Euro had gone down on that day. Okay, or there. Okay. If Euro had gone down on Monday, as Night Owl had originally thought, Night Owl was looking for a short either at 1393, which is the at sign, or a couple lines above that, you'll see a tilde. And there's a short at 1382. Now, here's what that tilde means. We're not chasing the market there, but it says if market goes down to 1382 before it goes up to 1393 then try to go short at that line in between which is 1388 that technique almost always works it did not work monday because there was no tilled line and there was no tilled line because market was already underway so that's why monday was kind of an odd situation um, and, and again, I don't, I, I don't chase when I developed Night Owl, I knew that my philosophy does, is not to chase markets. And that's why if the market's already open, either it retraces to my price and we go in, or I just let it go. And Monday I had to let it go because it never retraced. But that, that's the meaning of the at and the tilde. All the other lines you see there are, let's say, optional. If, if, um, if the stop is uh, six lines behind the ad entry, which it is now because volatility is rising, then any of the prices between the at and six lines beyond the at are recommended entry prices. They're all square of nine prices. The closer you get to the stop, of course, the, the lower your risk. Um, I have a subscriber, this is just a quick aside, I have a subscriber who only takes a night owl trade if the market retraces all of the way to the line in front of the stop. So she may only get two or three entries a month, but when she does that, she's got a situation where the stop, let's say using this, as, this current array as the example, the at line is at 1393, so the stop is at the 1422 line. It's the uh, five lines below. So her, in her case, she won't take an entry to go short unless it's at 1415. So she's risking seven ticks and she's targeting C, which is price 1372. So she's, um, she's targeting, what is that? About 43 ticks. She's, she's targeting 43 ticks and risking only seven. She only gets two or three of these a month, but when she gets them, I mean, she's as happy as a clam because she's taken almost no risk and, she, you know, it's almost like free money. So again, this gets back to the concept of how much risk versus how much re potential reward a trader wants. And, you know, when you have lots of subscribers, there's no way you can know that for everybody because everybody is different. Other traders don't ever want to miss a move, you know, so they'll take, they'll take the entry at 82 if it, if market goes down there and they're not going to worry about the the uh, the retracement because they'll seek the target C for 82 which is 38 
and you know maybe it only gets there 35 percent of the time which is about right for the tilt line um but they don't want to miss a move they are aggressive traders and if they trade small lottage and they take the loss when it doesn't succeed then you know they they are willing to accept that so again that's what the purpose of the array is it's to provide square of nine prices for every subscriber to choose where he or she is most comfortable in, in making an entry based on the recommended stop. Okay, we had a couple of questions. Um, okay. Sure. Thomas says, how many followers do you have? It's, it's a handful, it's not uh, hundreds or anything, so it's a small number. It's a small number because we only moved over to Aramir when about the 30th of October, I guess. And this is the first presentation that I've done at Aramir. So um, that's in fact the purpose for this um, roundtable discussion today is to introduce the Aramir uh, audience uh, to, to Night Owl. So, you know, hopefully we get some, some subscribers today based on this. Um, and again, I, I'll emphasize to those of you who are not familiar, um, uh, Night Owl is, well, I began developing it in 2011, began trading it in 2014. Um, so it's uh, about four years old, historically with the 73% accuracy here at Aramir, 78%. That little bit higher number actually has a reason. It's not just by chance. Um, since the original inception of Night Owl, I've introduced um, an additional concept into it which you know, I can't discuss in detail because it's proprietary, but let me just put it this way. Night Owl has recognized, I should say I've recognized and built into Night Owl, um, the significance of when a market will retrace to what's called a price of control. Um, the price of control is a concept that's, um, that was developed in 1988 and it's, um, it's proprietary to the Chicago Board of Trade. Um, and it, it, essentially it's the mode price. If you remember from your middle school math classes, mode is the most common number to occur in a set of numbers. So the price of control essentially is the most commonly traded price for any given day. And um, that, that price um, is, it's critical to Night Owl's daily determinations. And I discovered, um, oh, I don't remember exactly when, maybe a year and a half ago or so. I discovered that not only is the price of control from the previous day important, which is part of the standard, um, standard price that you will get if you subscribe um, through your charting service to market profile. Um, but the, the prices of control on days when a market has made a significant turn, a pivot in other words, those prices have amazing power to turn a market around. When I made that discovery, I factored that into Night Owl and that boosted the accuracy percentage from the lower 70s to the upper 70s, which is where we're at now. Okay, uh, Dan also had a couple questions. Is, uh, what are your most recent results after your last email posting of 15 trades, i.e. during most recent month and what broker do you use? Okay, um, since then we have posted, if I'm not mistaken, three times. And the reason for that long delay, there were no posts at all from, the, I believe it was the 23rd of November until this past Monday. So that number that you're referring to, the 15, um, I think it was like something like 15 wins and 16 calls or something like that. And since then there have been three. And the reason um, only three was during the period from November 24 through December 9, I was not online because I was doing a cross country household move. So that doesn't mean that Night Owl couldn't find anything. It simply means I, for, well, for two weeks, I had no internet because <laughs> I need, I don't, you know, I can't do night owl analysis on a, on a mobile phone. I actually have uh, three PCs running and 10 screens running to do all the analysis. 
Um, and until I had internet, which wasn't until last Friday afternoon, there were no posts. So the, the results have not changed since then. As to the brokerage I use, um, let me put it this way. Um, the brokerage I recommend if you are going to trade your own money is Stryker Securities in Chicago. Um, Stryker, uh, I've known the, the principals at Stryker since 1998. They were uh, two of them, I should say. At the time, there were three. One has since retired. Um, the other two were my referrals for um, my Series 3 registration. You have to provide five recommendations, and two of my five came from Stryker. Um, I think very highly of Stryker Securities and the Gallusses. Uh, they are the family that founded Stryker and have run it as a family enterprise for whatever, 20 five plus years, I guess. Um, anyway, so that would be my recommendation for those of you who want to trade your own money. As a corollary to that, by the way, if you desire to trade your own money, but don't have the ability to um, monitor the trades yourself, you know, because you're working at a job or you know, whatever, Night Owl a correction, Stryker, <clears throat> excuse me, Stryker is setting up a program as we speak um, under which the money that I trade at Stryker will link to any Stryker client accounts so that those accounts can take the same trades that I take. You know, the same so basically entry. auto trading. It's, it's essentially auto trading, exactly. Um, it's, it's following the, the only thing that the only caveat I'll say to that, Tom, is it's not auto as in, oh, they turn on a switch and the computer does it all. It's, it's mimicking my trades. It takes my entries. It takes my targets, my exits. It recognizes my stops. So in other words, it's, it's mirroring what I do. Right. Um, so, it, it, um, that, that, to me, that's a huge advantage for those people who cannot or, uh, trade during the day, um, or certainly who cannot trade 23 hours. Because, you know, we begin our trading at 6 p.m. and it goes until um, 5 p.m. the next day. So it's, it's a wonderful service, and we're setting that up as we speak. Um, when that will be operational, I'm not sure just because of the holidays, but I, I think it's safe to say that no later than the first week of January, that should be underway. Um, Otherwise, um, for those who would prefer to trade somebody else's money, either because you don't have money that you can trade on your own or simply don't want to put your own money at risk, um, we can refer you to a highly regarded proprietary trading firm that also is based in Chicago. In fact, um, uh, they're just down the street from Stryker, although there's no affiliation between the two. Um, and that that firm, I cannot name them until you've actually subscribed because it wouldn't be fair to the people who um, have joined. But that firm is recognized in the Inc. It's not the Fortune 500, it's the Inc. 500. It's one of those companies in the Inc. rankings. Um, so I guess that gives you a big clue. You can go find the Inc. rankings and maybe you'll identify them. But be that as it may, they, they have agreed to provide tryouts to subscribers. And anyone who successfully passes the tryout is guaranteed a $150,000 trading allocation, capital allocation from that bank. The subscriber does not put up any risk capital at all. So, and I, I have to emphasize this because this is something that makes this bank different from virtually every other prop shop that is out there. Most prop shops will require you to put money up as first dollar loss, meaning that, hey, if you, if you lose money, it's coming out of your pocket before it comes out of theirs. In the case of this bank, they they will not accept money from you. Even if you try to put up first dollar loss money, they will not accept it from you. They are willing to take 100% of the risk. In exchange, they will pay you 80% of the profits 
beyond the first $5,000. Now you're probably thinking, aha, there, I knew there was a catch. Yeah, on the first $5,000, they will pay you 100%. So it's actually to your benefit, not to theirs. It's a fabulous deal. So you get 100% of the first $5,000 of profit. You get 80% of the profits beyond it. So you're, you're wondering, well, what is the catch? And the catch is this. That bank employs extremely tight risk parameters. I mentioned a moment ago, they allow $3,000 of loss in one day. Well, think about that. On $150,000, 3,000 is only 2%. It's not a very big number. So I'll put it to you this way. I encourage everybody to do the tryout. Even if you have no intention of trading for the bank, do the tryout. Why? Because it will sharpen your skill as a trader. If you can trade successfully without risking more than 2% of your capital in one day, you can trade for anybody. That is the benefit of using this bank. It will, it will sharpen your skill as a trader and make you successful. You know, whether you're trading their money or yours or somebody else's for that matter. So jump on that opportunity while it's there. I can't say how long it will be there. Probably once they fully allocate their capital, they'll pull the plug. I don't know. I don't work for that bank. I have I don't get compensated by that bank for making this plug. All I'm saying is to go to that bank, you have to have some kind of strategy to trade. They're not just going to hand you 150. They're going to give you a tryout. And on that tryout, you will succeed and receive a, a capital allocation from them if you grow that hypothetical simulated electronic 150,000 to 159 no matter how long it takes you, it has, to, it has to last at least 10 days. But beyond that 10 days, no matter how long it takes you, if you grow 150 to 159 without risking more than 3%, uh, 2%. correction, 2%, correction, $3,000 in one day, they guarantee they will fund you with 150. I mean, I have never seen anything better than that in 20 plus years of trading. They have Even, a great business model, don't they? It, it, it is. It, 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 it's wonderful because this is how they have diversified themselves. They have over 500 traders doing this. Sure, they have some traders who are long on the euro today. They have some traders who are short on the euro today. And you think about it, well, how, how do they make money? It's because everybody's entries and exits are different. And they know that if market conditions are a certain way, like for example, we have high volatility right now, they may say, oh, well, we know Mark Ansel's trades do well in high volatility situations. So we're gonna put more money behind him. He may think he's only got um, two percent to play with, but you know, well, we may allow him a little more. I can't say that they do that because they're not going to tell me. I never know how much money is behind me or behind my subscribers. I don't mean just me. I mean behind my subscribers. I never know that because they're not going to reveal that. But they know who does well under what circumstances. So they know where to put their own money. Because just because I may have five of my subscribers at, at the bank trading the bank's capital, that doesn't mean the bank's own principals aren't piling their money into Night Owl when volatility is good or you know, under those conditions when Night Owl just books it, you know, as opposed to somebody else who may do very well when markets are choppy. So yes, they have, a, they have an outstanding business model. Not only that, but for everybody who takes the tryout, and bear in mind, not everybody succeeds. Uh, and, and I don't mean night owl people, I mean just people in general. They're not just offering this to night owl, this is their business model. This is what this, what this bank does. Um, this, this is their reason for existence. So they have all these different systems that the traders are bringing to them, Night Owl plus who knows how many others. And they've got more than 500 traders doing this. And 
out of the 500, of course, all those 500 succeeded. Well, out of 500 who succeeded, how many failed? Well, multiply that by about 18. What, you know, what's 500 times 18? You know, thousands of, of traders failed. So statistically, when they know that 90 plus percent of those who try out fail, if you were that, if you were in that situation, what would you do? Wouldn't you take the other side of the trade? I would. So this is something else they do. If, if a new trader shows up and he buys the Euro, they know from doing this for however many years now, I think they began in 2012. So six years, they know from six years of experience, plus however many years they spent developing their own business model, that if a new person is buying the Euro, statistically, they have a great chance of making money by shorting it. Now, if that new trader is a night owl trader and 78% of the time he's right, okay, well, eventually they learn, well, we don't want to do that with somebody who's trading night owl. We'll go with that person instead of go against him. So these are extremely smart people. And I wish I had been this smart 20 years ago to come up with such a concept because it's, it's, a, it's why they're in the ink, you know, 500. These guys are just doing extremely well with this business model. I'm just one little trader out here who developed a model that, that succeeds and, and providing it to you folks to take to this bank or any other prop shop you want to trade for or any institution you may already trade for or tr just to trade your own money. You, you now have a tool in Night Owl with a high probability of profit success to grow your capital or grow the capital that you're trading. Hey Mark, we had another question. Uh, Thomas says uh, trading for a bank has to be covered with a license with the regulators. How do they manage to do it? Do you know? I don't know. I have a series three, but that was not required. Um, I would, I'll put it this way, Thomas. The money that the bank has put up is all private capital. It's a, it's a private equity bank. We're not talking about TD Ameritrade or Merrill Lynch or, you know, any, we're not talking about any legal entity that has accepted investment money from the outside. These, uh, this is a private equity bank. The money that they have put up comes only from the principals. Consequently, as a private equity bank, they are not subject to regulation. You know, regulate, regulators cannot regulate what you do with your own money. You know, they, regulators exist to protect the public, theoretically. You know, that's, that's why there are regulatory bodies. But if you choose to create your own bank and, or maybe you and your friends create a bank and you pool your capital and you say, we're going to hire guys, to, or we're going to hire traders to trade this money for us. That's what this bank has done. So they're not subject to that kind of oversight. If you have a series three, great. I, I happen to have one, but it's completely unnecessary for trading for this bank. If I were to trade for Merrill Lynch, it's a different story because, you know, Merrill Lynch or Goldman, you know, or any of the Wall Street firms that accept money from the public must be registered and the traders must be registered. But when the money is raised privately and it's all the principal's money and there's no money from the outside, they can hire whoever they want. And in fact, that's, that's something that this bank has done. They don't just have traders in the United States or even in the United States and Canada. They have traders all over the world. If you are listening to me from Russia, you can trade for this bank. You will trade dollars. You will get paid in dollars, not in rubles. And if you know anything about the exchange rate between the, the ruble and the dollar, you'll recognize that's a fabulous deal. So um, I, I put this out there for any of you who are foreign. This is not just an opportunity for Americans. This is an opportunity for traders worldwide, and they have traders worldwide. More of their traders are, are international than domestic. So it's just, it's a mind blowing opportunity. I've never, never encountered anything like this in my trading career. And, and I, I encourage everybody to at least consider it. Okay. Now, what else? Mark, I know uh, you had been trading Night Owl with a Thinkorswim account, right? Yes. Uh, is there anything special that somebody would need to do to use uh, Thinkorswim to trade Night Owl? Um, Thinkorswim is probably the least user friendly platform I've ever seen. 
having said that, and bear in mind, thinkorswim was developed for options traders. For those of us, and so therefore, if you are out there trading your options on thinkorswim, don't take to heart what I just said. Thinkorswim is, is um, complex to use for futures trading. It can do everything Night Owl needs. It's just not user friendly. Um, but it, it, certainly, it certainly will work. I mean, I have done it. What you need to do if you're using Thinkorswim, and, and I haven't used it now for a couple of months, so I'm trying to remember the terminology. Um, Thinkorswim has, I call it a contingency order. I don't remember what the term was Thinkorswim used. But essentially, uh, for those of you who don't use Thinkorswim, you can ignore what I'm going to say because it will mean nothing to you. But for those of you who are familiar with the Thinkorswim platform, if you can picture the platform um, for entering a limit order, you can enter a bracket order. It's, it's, in the, it's in the buy custom or sell custom menu, depending on whether you're longing or shorting. So let's just say we're going to go long. So you use the buy custom, you then select bracket order that will allow you to put in your entry order and then put in your target order and your stop order, which only will trigger if your entry order occurs. Okay. I mean, that's of course what a bracket order is. Then farther over to the right, there's a, like a, I think it was like a gear wheel and you can click on that and it will, give you the option or the ability, let me see the ability. It'll give you the ability to enter a contingency or, or actually two contingencies. Um, and I would use that one for the, the tilled price, meaning that, okay, if market, if we're going to go long and if market rises on the Euro to, well, let me just see where the Euro is right now. Um, it sold in, off earlier today. Yeah, we're in the 1390s. So let, let me make my example like this. If market goes up, to 1400 even, then we will seek a long entry at the uh, square of nine price of 1398. Okay, you can use Thinkorswim to do that because you can put in that contingency price of 1400 to trigger. You can set a time limit on it. I mean, the sophistication is marvelous. It's just not user friendly. It's not easy to find this stuff but it, it will do it. Likewise, you can put in a second contingency that basically says, uh, you know, hey, the heck with it. If, if market, if, if, if a certain amount of time goes by, let's say um, by one o'clock this afternoon, I don't want to do this anymore. So you can put in that kind of a contingency as well as a second contingency, a cancellation contingency. Like you can put stop. in with a, with a time stop, you can put in a cancellation price um, so that, if if market goes to, I mean, you can, you can get rather sophisticated with this. If if market goes to thirteen ninety seven and then retraces down to thirteen ninety three, um, I I don't want to to take my entry at thirteen ninety eight. I mean, you can just you can go nuts with this with with that platform. So the sophistication is marvelous. It's just not easy to use, um, and and that's the only gripe that I had about Thinkorswim, um, that there are simpler platforms out there. For example, you might want to consider spending the subscription fee, which is something like $300 a month to use Cunningham's um, T4 platform. It has the same sophistication as Thinkorswim. It's just easier to use. Um, that's all. But, and, and again, it has the sophistication Night Owl needs. For trading Night Owl, that is what you need. You need the ability to enter a bracket order and you need the ability to enter a contingency order. In the case of Night Owl, I, I don't use time stops. There's no reason you can't. You know, if, if, if you don't wanna take the trade be after let's say seven in the morning because you have to commute to work or something like that, well, you know, fine. Um, Night Owl doesn't recognize that, but Night Owl definitely uses the contingency based on price. That's what that tilled symbol uh, in the array means. It means if the market goes to that price, that seek the entry uh, at the next better price. And just to clarify, Eric uh, doc talked about prop shops won't allow holding trades overnight. Well, Night Owl doesn't hold anything overnight. 
That's absolutely correct. Night Owl, in fact, that's one of the rules of uh, trading for our bank too. And, and that's, Eric is right, that's, that's typically the way prop shops are. You must be flat. In the case of our bank, if, if you try out for the bank that I will refer to you if you subscribe to Night Owl, that's one of their rules. You must be flat by four o'clock Eastern time. If you fail, if you don't go flat and they have to take you flat, you have just failed the tryout. So sad, too bad. It's extremely tough to pass their tryout only because you have to be attentive to the rules, like the 2% the loss limit. You, you know, be sure you place a stop that is inside of that 2%, in our case, $3,000. That's why our stop is at 20, it's 24 to 2600, just depending on where the prices fall on any given day. But be inside of that 3000, because there's gonna be slippage. You know, slippage is just a fact of life. You don't want the slippage to trip you up. You don't wanna have your stop at $2,950, because if you get $100 of slippage and you get stopped out at 3050, guess what? You just failed the, the, the tryout. So be attentive of, attentive of those kinds of things. Um, but yes, uh, the comment is correct. You, you cannot, and, and we do not carry positions overnight. Night Owl is flat every single night. Okay, I brought up the last slide because um, just to make sure we're, we didn't miss any slides. It's just the one, the overview. Uh, you're trading two markets, the 6E and the CL. I guess Correct. those are those are both pretty uh, pretty liquid markets. They are very liquid markets. Let me throw this out there. This this tends to take my new subscribers by surprise. CL is fabulous. Everybody who has has traded for a while knows that crude oil is consistently volatile. So and and as a trader, you want volatility. That's where you make your money when a market moves. I have discovered. This is especially true on Sunday nights around the Sunday night open. The QM, the mini crude oil, has even greater volatility than the CL, the big crude oil. I prefer trading the mini crude oil for that reason. So, you know, me, Mark Ansel, personally, I trade the QM and the 6E. It just so happens that right now, um, the margin requirement for trading either the QM or the 6E is about the same. Now, you know, that, that changes and certainly I don't set margin. Uh, the, the CME actually sets the margin and then the brokerages can adjust it if they're willing to assume some of the risk. The clearing firms, I should say, I'll have the brokerages too, but anyway. Um, so if, if you want to risk approximately the same dollar amount in trading the Euro currency, and trading um, crude oil. And let's say you can support three contracts with each one, then the QM and the 6E will be about the same dollar risk. And so for trading for the bank, where you're allowed that um, $3,000 daily loss limit, um, the QM and the 6E are the two markets that make sense. So Mark, on a, a typical trade, um, you, you, put, you, you publish the arrays, and then uh, what's the next steps for the subscriber and the pacing? You know, how, how does a typical trade work? Um, I'm not sure I understand your question, but I'll, I'll, I'll okay, take so, a... Yeah, so you'll, you'll publish the array and then the subscriber gets it. Um, uh -huh. Then they, they look at the market and they, they wait for the open and get their, their software set up, but um, they have to set up the bracket orders and the stops and that kind of stuff. And then is there any monitoring? I know sometimes the, the market reverses and you send gotcha. messages out. I, I, I'm with you. Okay. Um, first of all, you actually have to wait until after the open because um, Night Owl needs that opening price in order to determine where the at line and the tilde line go. And the uh, quote but, but, open is 6, 6 p.m. Eastern? Yes, yeah, 6 p.m. Eastern every night. Okay. Um, and, and Sunday night through uh, Thursday night. Yes. Okay. So once, once I have the opening price, then I can determine where the at and the tilde go. And then I make the post uh, on the Aramir site. 
Okay, so the subscriber, I guess, gets an email or a text message notifying that um, there's a new Night Owl post, go take a look. So what the subscriber would do um, is look for the stop. It, the stop currently is six lines um, behind the at entry and then decide which line do they wanna play depending on how much risk they wanna take. The simple thing, of course, is just to go with the at symbol, especially if you're a new subscriber, just go with the at symbol and seek that entry and know that if you're trading three contracts, you're risking around uh, 12 or $1,300. Okay, monitoring. Well, if you've got your bracket order out there, um, you're either seeking whichever target, I advise uh, target Charlie, because that's where delivery occurs. That's what Night Owl considers a success is when we get to target Charlie. Um, so you can put in your bracket, whatever the value for target Charlie is, you can put in your bracket, whatever the stop is, the stop again, six lines below the at. Um, in between, well, it, it, that's the simplest thing to do because if, if we get to target, if we get to target C, target Charlie, you're out, you're done, you've got your profit. Sometimes traders want to trail a stop. Um, and if, if you're flush and if you have the ability to monitor markets during the day, I absolutely encourage you to trail a stop. Um, target C is great. You know, it's 40, 45 ticks on the euro. That's a nice profit on three contracts. You've just made about 17 to $1,900 and you've risked 12 to 13. So the, the numbers are there. You're gonna win over 70% of the time if you're doing what you're supposed to do. So, you know, you, you, can, you can calculate your expected return as a nice positive number. Um, on the other hand, you know, there is a certain psychology involved that you, uh, if you've taken your exit after 40 or 45 ticks and it happens to be a day where Euro went 150 ticks, you, you might feel kind of silly. You might feel foolish that you got out too soon. So if you are flush and have the ability to trade more than three contracts, do trail a stop. Use the array to help you decide where to put your stop. This is what I do. Um, do we have an array up, Tom, and tell me I which do. one? Yeah, okay, I'm looking at the, uh, the the initial nine uh, December okay. euro trade with the short. The one that was short. Okay. Yeah. So um, we again pretending that market had gone down on that day, and we shorted the 1393. And let's just say market is now at 1290, even. So it's gone beyond target F. All right. You can see target F is 1298. Um, yep. If anybody doesn't see where that number comes. Um, I just underlined it. Okay, good. Um, so, so market has gone to 1290. It's definitely gone in our direction. We're trailing a stop. Volatility is high, folks. You, you don't necessarily want to put your stop too tight on the market because you'll get stopped out. And then what if market keeps going your way and you have no way of getting back in unless you chase and I don't chase. So, for a 12, so once we've passed that 1298, I will count back three letters. So uh, one, two, three, that takes us back to target C, 1349. And then I will go up one line, 1344. That's where my stop is. And so I'm allowing in round numbers, what? About uh, 46 ticks. Um, that may seem like a lot. And sometimes, yeah, it stops out. But most of the time, it will get you to the end of the day. So every time we pass through a new letter, if we get to target G, 1282, do the same thing, count back three. Now we're at D, you go up one to 1327. That's how I trail a stop. Use the arrays, the arrays are, are far more than just you know entry and, and, and uh, lettered targets. Use them because they are all square of nine prices. Those square of nine prices tell you that market is most likely to turn on these numbers. I didn't mention something that I should have, um, and, and this is rather critical. If, if there are other questions, don't worry, we'll answer them. But no, let we're me good. Okay, let me put this out there for, for you folks. Square of nine is certainly not my invention. I learned it from a floor trader. Floor traders, according to him, floor traders 
by the hundreds back then use square of nine pricing. Many of those floor traders still trade on the internet today. So square of nine is fairly commonly used. Whenever you are doing something that is commonly used, somebody who has a big account can basically front run your trades. And if their account is large enough, and I'm talking about an institutional trader, you know, if they're trading dozens of lots, they can turn a market if they put in, a, in a, an order that's a couple of ticks in front of a square of nine. And so you're gonna be left there, if you're trying to enter, let's say at a square of nine price, or you're trying to exit at a square of nine price and market turns just before it gets there. And that's heartbreaking. So as a practical matter, when I am trading, even though I'm publishing the square of nine prices, that's what you see in the array, I fade my entries and I fade my targets by two ticks and I fade my stops by three ticks. So on this display that Tom has posted for us, if we are putting in an entry based on that at line, shorting 1393, my short's gonna be 1391, two ticks in front. Likewise, the stop is, um, well, by this post, it was still five lines below, which was the 1422 line. Now the stops are six lines, so it would be the 1427 line. Yes, the, the square of nine price is 1427. My stop's gonna be 1430. I'm fading at three ticks. Just to allow a little more breathing room in case there is a big, institutional trader trading dozens of lots on the same prices I'm using, I want to be sure I don't miss the move because that trader's market turned the market around. So when you're fading this short entry, you're putting it two ticks uh, above? Uh, below. Below, okay. You, 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 the, the idea is you don't want to miss the move. And so my fading will put my entries at a price that's slightly in front of a square of nine price. So in front of for a short means below, in front of for a long means above. All oh, right, right, sure. Okay, makes sense. Like, likewise with the targets on that same at line, you know, where we're shorting 1393 and target C is 1349, my target's gonna be 1351. Right. Just, just a couple of ticks in front. I am willing, and I always use limit orders, by the way. Um, I mean, with a stop, you don't wanna use a stop limit if, if that's your protecting, because of course, if the market goes through the stop, um, without hitting you, then you're really, you're really up a creek with no paddle. But for my entries and my, um, my target exits, I do use limit orders to control my slippage. And, and my slippage are those two ticks on the entry, two ticks on the exit. So four ticks on the 6E is you know, whatever it is, uh, $50. I'm willing to give the market $50 so I don't miss the trade. Makes sense. Okay. And I guess, uh, so the last thing uh, is, well, not the last, uh, the market's trading along and then like what happened in this case, the market reversed and you'll send out a new message. I, I will, uh, if, if the stop gets stopped, I mean, if, if the stop gets hit and we get stopped out, well, you know, I mean, that's life. Sometimes it happens with, with Night Owl, you know, we lose uh, about one time in five, you know, which by the way is a pretty, decent ratio, I mean, compared to most systems that are out there. Um, sometimes I will put a post out just advising traders to exit. And of course, when that happens, it means we're in front of the stop. Um, but I will do summary analyses on some days. You know, if, 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 if Night Owl senses something during the day, that it could not sense the night before. And I'm not talking about news necessarily. I happen to believe that news is already factored into prices. So, you know, I'm, I am not a fan of exiting a trade in at, at exiting a crude oil trade at 1029 because you get the in, weekly inventory at 1030. That, that's already factored into the prices in my belief. And that's one of the reasons I use the stops I use. Um, but if, if there is some other factor that Night Owl could not measure the night before that becomes apparent during the next day in doing my summary determinations when I get up in the morning, I will occasionally put a post out there advising the subscribers, just take an exit. Exit at the market, 
or, you know, if we get to price, whatever, whatever I specify, if we get there, just take your exit and be happy. And we'll wait for a better play uh, tonight when I post the next uh, array. And so, how, how, how often would you say that happens if the market not, has some event? Not very. Um, maybe a couple times a month. Um, okay. it, it's not, it's not frequent. Um, but you know, I mean, I, I won't say I never do it. Um, I, I will occasionally put a post out there or like we had this past Sunday night, um, where the original Euro, uh, play, which is the one we've been using today as our example, um, the opening price was beyond the, the gap range. So you have to pay attention to that. Uh, that's why that gap range is in there. It's telling you that so long as a market opens between these two numbers, the array below is good. If the market opens outside of those two numbers, don't do the array because something has changed. And in that event, as I did uh, Sunday night, I may, and I'll emphasize may, put an updated post out there. If I don't put an updated post out there, it just means we don't do anything. You know, because we opened outside the array, there's no new um, array to post, and so we just wait until um, 6 p.m. the next evening to Take try a day again. off. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's essentially what it is. But in in this past Sunday night's case, um, in, in running through the numbers again, Night Owl was very clear that because we opened at 1407, this market is very likely to go up, and so I put the um, I put the long array out there and I had, you know, I had to make a note that says, you know, there's no tilt line for this session. And that was because market was already underway. So it, that meant that if we don't get the retracement we need, then just let it go. But otherwise, if we do get that retracement, jump on it. Um, so you want to pay attention just in case an updated message comes along. And then uh, is there any time? I mean, you have to sleep sometime, right? So <laughs> yeah, theoretically, <laughs> yeah. Optional, right? you sleep, <laughs> yeah, when yeah. You sleep when you die, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, I confess that's, um, that's the number one disadvantage to doing what I do. It, um, it does affect the ability to sleep. Um, and having said that, um, there is nothing wrong it, it, I'm going to put it this way for you, for you folks that for whatever reason, you don't want to trade at night. Some, some traders worry about volume. Volume comes into account in night owl in the market profile calculations that price of control I talked about earlier. And the other two uh, numbers in market profile are the value lines. Um, so, so when night owl runs its calculations, it's, using market profile numbers, those numbers have volume already built into that. Aside from that, I don't worry about volume. That's why I trade the QM. QM volume is only a small fraction of the CL, but I don't care. Why? Because everything I do is on a limit order. And you know, if the, it, it, the, the QM has better volatility than the CL when the markets are thin, like Sunday night. So if QL, for example, um, uh, retraces to 53.18, QM is likely to retrace to 53.40, something like that. If I'm wanting to go short, almost always you can get a better price on QM in, in that kind of an instance. So I don't worry about the volume, but there are traders who don't like trading at night because they worry about volume. If you are one of those traders who's just not comfortable with trading at night, there's nothing wrong with doing this as a strategy. Use the same night owl setup, and if that night owl, if that setup has not elected during the night, it's still perfectly valid. Um, I don't have I don't have the numbers for what I'm about to say next, so this is going to be my best seat of the pants estimate. I would say somewhere around 30% of the time. The night owl trade does not elect until the day period anyway. The North American period I'm talking about. Uh, let's just say 8 o'clock a.m. or later, Eastern time. Sometimes, and, and if, if I were a subscriber rather than the guy who's running night owl, I might be tempted only to take daytime trades if the price is better. Now, what does that mean? It means using that same example we've been using all along, the, the 1393 at line, 
if you were to wake up at nine o'clock on Monday morning, because this was a Sunday night um, post, if you were to wake up at nine o'clock Monday morning, there's no follow-up communication from Air Amir about, you know, Night Owl has exited, we're done. If, if, if there's no communication, Night Owl is still live. That array is live until uh, 5 p.m. Monday evening. And if, if, if the at is at 1393 and you see, oh, the market's at 1408 and Night Owl's got a recommended entry at 1410 and the Night Owl stop is 1427, you're only risking 17 ticks. Why not take that trade? So bear that in mind. Again, that, that situation is going to happen probably 50 plus percent of the time. Night Owl, because the, the, the at line is, um, how shall I put it? It's it's not aggressive. It's not conservative. The aggressive is in front of the tilde. The conservative is way back near the stop. The at is somewhere in between. It's it's meant to be, you know, especially for the new traders, you know, where it's you don't have a lot the of the Goldilocks line. Yeah, you know, you can think of it that way. If if you're new to this and you you don't have a good feel for for what to do, I mean, where to enter, then use the at line until you develop, you know, your own sense of comfort as to whether you want to be closer to the stop or more aggressive. Um, but definitely, if you wake up in the morning and stop has not been hit and market is somewhere beyond that at line and offering you a better price, by all means, take it. So I guess the last step would be uh, our trader has a night owl trade on, he has all his orders in, and he goes to sleep and then you know the market's trading do you put in a, a time stop or do you manually cancel i mean because you need to be flat by five o'clock right he has to be flat by five o'clock if you are working on a platform that allows you to do a market of closed order you're good to go um you know just put in your, your market at the close order and it'll take you out and you're done otherwise yeah you have to be attentive especially if you're trading for the bank by you know I cannot emphasize this enough. Be absolutely sure you are flat by four Eastern because the, otherwise they will make you go flat and you are done with them as a trader. <laughs> so, right. so, you know, set your alert for three 30 in the afternoon or something like that. Cause you don't want that to happen. You don't want that four o'clock to come and go and you miss your exit. Or just set the market on close and then you yeah, never worry about it. You, know? you don't have to, if, if, and not all platforms have that. Um, uh, but if your platform has it, use it because you're going to need it. Because yeah. I, again, I cannot emphasize this enough. Night Owl is flat at the end of every day, even though at 1800 hours, theoretically, Night Owl is going to take a new trade. That new trade may not be in the same direction. Night Owl frequently will be short one day and long the next day. Um, because again, it's making a prediction of which direction is most likely to get to target C first. That's all it does. It's making no political statement about, oh, the US dollar is strong or weak or, or the this jobs are coming the, out or this the jobs report, yeah. is doing this or that. Yeah. It, it makes no judgment about any of that. It's very simple. Which direction should get to target C first? And therefore, we may be short one day, long the next day, short two days after that, long again. It's going to be back and forth, you know. Just go with whatever it recommends. All right, Mark. Uh, we're over an hour, and I know oh. there's still more to talk about, but we have another session schedule on the 26th. Maybe we can talk about sachets or whatever other topics we want to dig a little deeper in. Yeah, I, I didn't talk about sachets at all. Um, the, the lines beyond the at line are for sacheting, and some, some of you may wonder, what is a sachet? It's very simple. If you know sachet, sacheting is a dancing term. You know, you're shuffling your feet kind of thing. And the original idea of sacheting was um, if you're playing the at line, again, in our example, 1393, and market goes up to 1398, um, there's a body of thought that says, okay, we've gone to 1398. There's a target A at 1389. If we get there, we've just made whatever, nine ticks. Why not move the stop backwards by the next line? Because that's that may be something comparable, you know, like eight or nine ticks, something like that. Um, uh, that's what sacheting is. It it it's 
it's intensive, meaning that if you're going to sashay, it's a perfectly valid strategy. It's a nice way to make extra money, but it's really only valid for those of you who are trading by yourself, for yourself, and can sit at your computer terminal and do it. Um, automating the sashaying, especially if it's backing off a stop, has proven to be quite a challenge. I haven't met anyone yet who has done it, although I, I had a subscriber at Capital Discussions um, who uh, was working on it. He was an MIT guy who was working on it. Um, uh, I, I believe he's in our, he's still subscribed. I, I doubt he's in here today. Um, if he is, I hope he'll raise his hand. But uh, um, that's the idea behind sashaying is to take little tiny chunks out of the market at the prices other than the at line. Um, Cause those prices are there. Market gets to target a over 70% of the time. It's a high percentage trade. Um, so if, again, if you have the ability to watch the market throughout the day, those little sachet trades are, are nice little trades for you to take. And uh, Peter had a question. Uh, is there a trial period? I, I know there's no trial. I know on some of the other trade alerts, I've done things like have a, a discounted first month. And maybe... I, I, I don't do that. And the reason for that is unlike all the other services that Aramir offers, Night Owl is daily. It's, it's every single day. And um, as opposed to putting, you know, one or two trades on a month, um, it's very active. Um, administratively, I don't want to deal with, well, you know, who's in the trial, who's not, and so well, forth. Well, I can take care of that. Um, That's not it's, it's not something I'm going to offer. Um, okay. Night, Owl, Night Owl's results are there. They are consistent. It's, it's a high percentage um, um, strategy to follow. And um, if you're trading three lots, your first winning trade is going to pay for a quarterly subscription it's going to almost pay for an annual subscription. So um, because, because of that, um, y either you have faith in it or not. 79% accuracy is a hard number to argue with. There are very few models that can offer that and at the same time offer a reward to risk ratio that is greater than one. Right. Very, very typically when you have a high accuracy percentage, like a credit spread, your reward to risk ratio stinks. You know, it's like one to three. Um, night Owl, the, the, the Night Owl setups with the risk that we are using um, is at a target C with three lots is typically looking for a $1,900 profit plus or minus about $100 with a $1,200 to $1,300 risk. And it's got an almost an 80% winning rate at doing that. So just one winning trade is going to pay for your quarterly subscription and therefore there's no trial period. Can you trade this with one lot? I assume you could. Yeah, there's no reason you can't. Um, I, I throw the three out there because it seems to work best for the bank. The bank will allow you th up to three when you begin. So uh, if, if you, uh, well, even when you're doing the tryout with the bank for the $150,000 tryout, they will start you at three lots. Um, it can be CL or QM, whichever, you know, you want. Um, Night Owl, again, is based on the QM, for the reasons that I said uh, about the volatility and, and such, and, and also the risk being approximately the same in dollar amount as with the 6E, uh, also about the same in margin. Um, but you can trade one lot. Um, you, you know, you can trade, especially if you're trading your own money, you can trade uh, however much risk you are willing to take. Personally, I would not recommend risking more than 5% on any one trade. And that's why I said, even if you don't have any desire to trade for the bank, do their tryout because it will hone your skills such that you can trade successfully and not risk more than 2% of your capital. So you can trade for anybody when you do that. Now, getting back to the question about um, trading the one lot. Even if I were trading just one lot, I would still target C. Definitely, if you're trading one lot, don't don't try to um, trail a stop. Right. Because uh, in that event, um, you know, we you could give get it all back. You yeah. could give it all back. You know, and psychologically, that's tough. But if you can trade multiple lots, you know, it makes sense to trail a stop. Not with all of them, but um, if I were trading three lots, I would trail a stop with one. Yeah. Okay.
All right, Mark. Um, I think that uh, pretty much does it for this time. We'll uh, we'll see you on the 26th. Uh, everyone have a good Christmas if you're celebrating it. And uh, try not to get trampled in the stores with all the people shopping. So <laughs> My wife <laughs> right. hates the Christmas going to the grocery store. It's, uh, it's nuts. Well, yeah, I mean, everywhere. Um, I don't like it either, and I'm a single guy. I live by myself, so I think sometimes I'm glad I don't have to deal with all that Christmas shopping because yeah. uh, it's 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 stressful. It's more, as far as I'm concerned, it's more stressful than trading is. Um, but anyway, thank you everybody for attending today. Um, I hope to see hope to see you enroll. Um, and I'll uh, I'll put a link to the night owl in the recording. Uh, unfortunately. Uh, the, the hosting provider that I'm using for the public site, um, they've, <laughs> they've blocked my IP address. So when I try and go to uh, the website, I get this 403 forbidden error. So uh, <laughs> That must be frustrating for you as the administrator of the site, but okay. Yeah, I can get to it from my server, but uh, yeah, it's kind of, a, it's kind of funny, but anyway, I'll, I'll put the link in the, in the, in the recording and um, yeah, hopefully if you are curious, give it a try. And again, we'll uh, have Mark back on the 26th if, and uh, we'll go through a few, few bit uh, more it, in depth. If I can interject very quickly here, hopefully we haven't lost anybody, especially the person who asked about the trial period. Um, there are three different subscriptions available. Um, by far, the, the one that makes the most sense in terms of dollars and cents is the annual subscription because um, uh, it, it gives you the most bang for your buck. Most of the subscribers choose the quarterly, but there is also a monthly subscription available. I mean, you're, you're basically risking, I, th I think it's $300 for a monthly subscription for one market, $400 for two markets. I mean, if you can't afford $400, and, 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 and you're not willing to take the risk that you can make that back three times over or well, close to four times over on your first trade, then you probably shouldn't be trading at all. Um, and I'm sorry to, to, to be so blunt and maybe callous in saying that, but it's, it's an excellent value for the, the, um, the money that you can possibly make trading night owl just doing what we've talked about today the at line and the, putting the stop where night owl recommends and going for target seat um so we hope to see see all of you at least do the one month try uh trial um at, it's at not really a trial but, or at the bank it, yeah but. yeah yeah exactly go with the bank and 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 take the trial with the bank use night owl as your model and um I can't promise you success, you know, but I have no reason to believe you won't be successful. There are five in front of you who already have done it successfully, who trade only for the bank. And then I, I have no idea how many others have followed my advice to just do the, the trial just to improve their own skills. But I cannot emphasize that enough. Okay, everyone. Thank you All for right. attending. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, everyone. We will uh, see you next time. And again, have a, a good holiday season. Oh, thank you. All right. Bye. Bye.